using cursor AI to add a payment checkout to your app. Amazing. So, what's this? Well, this is a little typewriter app that I've made, wow. and then I started using it to learn Cursor and Cursor Composer. Ooh. So far, I've been able to use Cursor prompts to add a super base back end to it so users can have accounts and load and save posts. So the next step was to see if Cursor Composer could add a checkout to this app using Lemon Squeezy. But when I tried it, it failed, and then I realized it all comes down to the prompt. So this video is going to focus on prompts like this one. This is the one that I've ended up with for generating the Lemon Squeezy checkout. <laughs> it's absolutely massive, but I'm just going to go through how I came up with this, and then maybe it will be useful when generating other features in apps, not just checkouts. But this one is checkouts. From here, there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm doing for the first time. And one of them is actually putting this instruction prompt through Cursor Composer. Um, so let's just try it out first. And then I'll go through what's in here because there's a lot in there and why it ended up so big. And um, let's see if it's going to work. Shift and I to open this full screen composer and you can see it's already got instructions uh, in the context so from here you can just tell it build me a, a checkout and it will do it or you can set it up this way where you can press create new new project I'm going to call it lemon squeezy checkout and then we'll set it up as a project so this is the, the project file and we're just going to copy the whole prompt into there and then from here to use it, we need to create a new composer and you can see it's got the checkout in the context already. Okay, so let's try it. I'm just going to remove the instructions because we've got it in here. Uh, create the... Okay, let's see what it's going to do. So it's going through all of these instructions, creating the files needed for a checkout. So it's created one, two, three, four, five, six, and final steps. So let's read what it's done. So set one, create pricing page, and that is this. Okay, and then let's go back to that composer. Step two, create the purchase product API route. Okay, then create the webhook route, create the managed subscription page. So it's added the webhook stuff and everything we need. That's pretty crazy. So I'm just going to press save all to actually test it and then let's go to what's the first page pricing page it's just forward slash pricing in the browser okay so okay so that we just tell it um, in page in page, in page desk, we need to separate the stuff from the so actually from here because it's gone wrong um i think the prompt needs working on so i'm just going to press reject all and it's back to where we were. So now um, I'm going to open the composer again and improve this prompt. It seems to keep getting the, the checkout page wrong by importing the wrong stuff because next is client and server now. So I'm going to add in the page that I already have that works um, and tell it refer to how page Okay, let's give that a go now. go manage subscription okay I've just come back to this a couple of days later 
And where I left off, I had a working prompt in in here, <laughs> in that project thing. But it's, it's gone. The whole prompt and the whole project here is just gone. I don't know how to get it back. But luckily, I'd saved the prompt here in instructions.txt. So I'm going to copy that in and I'm going to do the project again. I'm not sure if it's just going to disappear again. But that's something to watch out for. I'm going to run that now. Mm. So, let's the check out. That's, that's it. Let's see if it can do it. And then we'll go through the prompts. So it's creating all the files I needed. There you can see the pricing page, the pricing card, the purchase product API route, the webhook, and then the manage subscription page, manage subscription button, and the create checkout. Now I'm going to press save all. And yeah, that, instead of pressing accept all, always press save all to check if it works. So all these files are actually saved and, and runnable, even though it looks like a code diff, but it's saved to run save all. So you go to get to save all, you go into the composer bit here. And for the big screen, command shift I, you can see it. If you open it, there it is, save all. So it's hidden here, which isn't very handy. You have to open this panel wider. Okay, so now let's go and try it. So save them all and let's go to the browser. Let's see. So now it's saying that super base key is required. So something's gone wrong there. And that is on the pricing page. It's complaining about this here. Um, I'm going to compare that with the page that I had. So I'm going to close all the other ones. It was this one. This was the one that I made. So I'm just going to compare them two. And create client. It's importing the wrong one. So I need to add that to the prompt. I'm going to show you how I do that. So in the instructions, when creating the client, this is the example of um, this. Do not do it like this. So it's pretty specific, isn't it? Anyway, so I'm going to, now we know that that was wrong. Okay. There's the pricing page and there's the pricing card. Pressing this should bring up. Okay, it's done that. That's pretty good. Let's try it again. Resend. And 400. Um, invalid signature. Because it's hitting this 400, I have some working code. I'm just going to paste that over and then try that. And now it's worked. 200 payments gone through. Has it? Let's refresh this. You should see subscription created in green and there it is in the super base table, finally. Okay, so now it's working and we know where it went wrong. I'm going to come back to the instructions and update that webhook bit because that's the part that it's failing on now. And you might be thinking, why not just use a boilerplate to do this? And yeah, that's a good, good point because you'd have it set up straight away. But imagine you've got a code base existing and you've got this instruction file to add a checkout. In the cursor composer, you could attach your actual code base and say, add the checkout based on my code base, and it's going to get smarter. So I think maybe this stuff is actually going to be useful. Now let's find that webhook part. I'm going to add in when creating the client. Use this. That's good. It's already got it. Um, and this, checking the signature, use this. Okay, so now that's working. Checking manage subscription should 
open up the subscription page and we've got a working version so now we've got that we've updated the instructions what I'm going to do is bring back this composer which makes it I think that's, that's ours. So press reject all and everything's gone back to how it was. Don't save, don't save. Can't you just Okay. So you can see no pricing page, there's no pricing card component, and there's no API route. So now I'm gonna try it again with the new prompt command shift and I and pr then press reset composer and I'm just going to overwrite that and create the checkout but just before we do it let's just ensure that it is the old version so 404 on managed subscription 404 on pricing so none of them exist and now let's go for it create checkout Don't press accept all again because we might need to reject all. Save all and let's see forward slash pricing. And we've got nothing in here. Purchase. Okay, we're back, it's working. Two hundred there. Thank you for your order. Webhook two hundred. Come to the web hooks here. You two, two there, both green. Um, and we've got the record in the database. And now, if we come back to manage subscription, yep. Okay, that's good. That's it. Once you know it's working, you can press accept all and all those changes are now in our code base. So I already had a working checkout in another app with a very similar setup to this one. So I went through step by step the instructions of what's needed to create a checkout. Going through the prompt, let's just start from the top. We start off telling it who it is and what it's doing, making a checkout process. And then these are instructions that I added when things were going wrong with Next routing. So a specific instruction for Next, um, how to use, use client on client side stuff, because it kept doing that wrong for some reason. And then how the pricing page should check if the user's already subscribed. So I'm going through step by step the actual development process and also including API routes and code snippets like this. And then it just goes step by step through each one down to the webhook. And yeah, you, know, you remember we put in when checking the signature, use this code because it kept getting that wrong. So that's why these snippets are in there. And these are the database queries, the upsert for super base and that's pretty much it. So to build the prompt, I had the working version, worked back through it and created a set of instructions that can be used by anybody else at some point when I've done the super base part to build the full thing. Now that's done. I'm going to put this instruction file on the prototype website so it's available to look at. So next week at some point, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to upload the next video of setting up Superbase with Cursor and give you that file so that these two would work together. And in theory, you should be able to just tell it, create me a Superbase app with a lemon squeezy checkout. 
So stay tuned. Hit the subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.